This is Universal Orlando's Revenge of the Mummy. Featuring detailed sets, a curse-driven storyline, and two powerful LIM launches, this ride has become one of the underrated park favorites. Today we're live at Universal Studios Florida to take an extensive look at the engineering and technology behind it. So come with us behind the scenes to show you how it works. Located in the heart of Orlando, Universal Studios Florida opened in June of 1990 with an ambitious lineup of cutting-edge attractions. Getting many of them up and running, though, posed many unique challenges. One attraction that quickly became a guest favorite was Confrontation, an immersive suspended tram dark throw ride. Featuring two massive King Kong animatronics, countless special effects, detailed sets, and a live actor on board, the ride seated guests inside a suspended tram vehicle that roll on a steel track integrated into the ceiling structure of the building. In 2002, confrontation would close due to budget cuts, technical issues, and an overall shift in the kind of rides Universal felt were needed in the park. Shortly after confrontation closed, Revenge of the Mummy was announced for Universal Studios Florida and Hollywood, marking a new style of highly themed and thrilling additions for Universal. Between 2002 and 2004, the Confrontation building was gutted with all major theming and equipment removed. Because the track structure used for Confrontation was integrated into the ceiling, it could not be easily removed. And so much of it still remains up there to this day. Being purpose-built for Confrontation, the show building Revenge of the Mummy occupies actually still has some of the original equipment meant for the ride. If you look up during your ride on Revenge of the Mummy, you'll actually still be able to spot some of the track work that was used for Confrontation using its suspended gondola ride system. After this, indoor footers and multiple equipment pits were constructed to support the new coaster. For this ambitious new ride, Universal worked with the coaster company Premier Rides, who are known for their launch coasters, to create two indoor linear induction motor-driven launch coasters with multiple show scenes and high throw sections. For demonstration purposes, I have made two different models for LSMs and LIMs. All right, so LSMs versus LIMs. What's the difference and why does it matter? As a refresher, linear synchronous motors pass high current through windings around a series of individually controlled iron cores fixed to the track. They impart magnetic flux into the permanent magnet yokes that are fixed to the ride vehicle and pass around the LSMs and that converts to a physical reaction. The magnetic yokes or calipers feature alternating polarities and an offset that allows for progressive motion control design so that the peak attraction force for each phase of magnetic yoke doesn't occur all at once. If it did, that would create a vehicle motion and a stepping motion and create a large amount of static magnetic friction to overcome. The LSM yokes are also designed to be out of pattern with the LSMs to create a gradient of attraction, meaning that some areas are more attracted to others depending on the field. On the other hand, LIMs are similar but differ in some critical ways. As the older propulsion system, linear induction motors or LIMs are a bit less complex but require more equipment. Linear induction motors take a large spool of enamored wire, very similar to LSMs, and induce a magnetic field into an iron core with an enclosure with a limited amount of precision. This is imparted into a reaction plate or a fin typically made from steel aluminum. 